respecting the data. Yeah? And yes, of course, it clearly helps, as we did here, when we engage the hind legs that she comes more uphill. But you know, we can still have horses that really sit down, engage perfectly behind, but still be a little bit too much against you in front in a, in a slight downhill position. Yeah? Yeah. And of course, horses need to be strong in the back, and the only way to get there is ride them over the back and stretch them properly. Yeah? But remember, it, it's so easy for them to take advantage of that. And that's what I saw a little bit in the warm-up. Again, design your warm-up in a way that the transition from the warm-up to your work in the show arena is not too drastic. Yeah, she's, she's not a horse you need to stretch a lot in trot <coughs> or in canter. In walk, yes. Let her be on a long rein for 10 minutes when you get on, no problem. She can stretch, yeah? But you don't need to encourage her to be too low. Yeah? You did good. Good job. Well done, good for you. And think about this idea of going rising trot, sitting trot. Oh, are you grabbing it? Thanks, You know, really making a difference there in the half fault and telling her when you sit down, it really needs to mean something. Yeah. yeah? Which the seat can't in posting trot. They can just go. Yeah? But when you sit down, I really need them to understand there's more to the seat than just sitting on a horse, yeah? Good, on the next long side. Ride a lengthening, and then bring her back in sitting trot. More uphill, it's too downhill. Uphill, wait until she's uphill, then go, good job. Nice, and bring her back, uphill, uphill. Yes, that's okay, good job, this is the, not lower. Good job, that's fine. And all the leg yield on this side with this hip, with this uphill tendency. Uphill, really uphill. Yes, right there. And you know when you bend her, she's gonna be inclined to dive a little bit. That's it. And slowly forward when you can. Sh uh, shoulders leading to the left. Shoulders leading, not the haunches. Shoulders leading, shoulders. Try it again. She <clears throat> she's, too much, she's going too much sideways behind. Yeah? Get the shoulders to lead the leg yield to the left. Uphill. It's a little deep there. Good job. Good for you. And leg shoulders to the left. Shoulders to the left. Yes. Yes. Good. Sideways. Good. Now it's perfect. Good. Once more the lengthening and she can be done. Yeah? But don't go when she's when, it, when it's a downhill feeling and she's against the bridle. Uphill. Good job. You wait. That's it. Good. The leg yield is fine. Good. Now go a little forward. Good. Straighten her. And once more the lengthening on the next long side. You don't have to go the whole long side. Good idea with the posting trot, good thinking. Go as much and as little as you can control. Good, and now. Excellent, good job. Good, down center line, halt at X. Yeah. Always remembering now that we put a little bit more pressure on her with those lengthenings coming more uphill now we want to make sure at the end she can stand still. Yeah? Uphill. Yes. Good. That's it. Go. Good halt. Uphill. That's okay. It's okay. And halt again. That's the way to do it. And now slowly giving her the rein for the... Ah, she needs to stand still. Again, okay? And slowly to the walk. You know, 
inch by inch you give her the rein that you feel that this idea of stretching down is very cooperative. It's not in a resistant way pulling the reins out of your hands. Yeah? That's it. So you try a free walk on long rein and you slow it. Ah, that's too much. Can you tell? Yeah. When you give her the rein, she, when you give an inch, she takes a foot. Yeah? You tell her if I inch, you can follow the reins inch by inch gently out of my hands and, and reach down in a positive, cooperative way. Yes. Yeah? So, so you know where I'm getting at. Yeah? It's, it's all about self-carriage, controlling the contact, not allowing a horse to take advantage of the bit, yeah? respecting the bit. We talk so much about accepting the bit, the acceptance of the bridle, or challenging for her to do a lengthening and then stand still. So good. Right, a couple more call transitions. But really getting comfortable with this idea of being on the bit, standing she still. Like halt. You can tell? Able to let go. Yeah? She's Take a go pony. About your position. That's perfect. <laughs> good. Be careful when you yeah. give her the rein. You know she can stretch. But what we don't know is that she can stretch respectfully now. Yeah. Excellent. Good. And hold again. Good. There you go. Good. Yeah, and it's unrealistic to say that this is going to improve drastically in one day. I just want you to think a bit more advanced when you ride her even though you, you're at the training level, yeah? but just thinking about the training level is not improving her overall self-carriage. Yeah? Think about your shoulders, and we finish with a bit more canter work on both sides, okay? You have already in a much better frame in walk, so that's good. Well, the transition, give a clear aid where you, you know, you take your leg back and then you put it on. It, canter, okay? Walk, canter. Go, do it from the walk. I like this frame. That's good. And it might even take briefly a little bit more contact. As long as that contact allows her to come together and you can give the rain after, it's, it's okay. Walk again. Don't accept it. No problem. Yeah, now make sure she's not drifting to the outside. No. Make her lighter in walk, a little softer. Good. A little straighter in the neck. Make sure she's not drifting into your outside leg, which, which is the leg that gives the main aid for the canter. So go from there. Excellent. Good for you. Very good. Down the long side. Yeah, and you know already, by keeping her just collected in the right lead canter, she's the, the quality of the canter won't improve. It's riding a controlled lengthening, shall we? Yeah? Gently forward, gently forward. Good, bring her back, ride the collection as you did before on the circle. That's, that's a much better frame. I like it. Good, and gently the lengthening. Only as much or as little as you can control. Like that. Good. And collect on the circle. Collect, 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 collect. A little more, a little more. But excellent. Give her the rain and praise her, praise her, praise her. Excellent. And what I like there, Shelby, when you, when you gave the rain, just fall into a longer frame. She stayed a moment there. Yeah? Good. Do that again. Yeah, a little lengthening, but now when you write the lengthening, as soon as she goes, relax the leg a little bit. Send her forward, send her forward, send her forward, relax the leg. That's how the canter gets bigger. Now close the leg when you want to collect her. Close the leg when you want to collect. And more collection until you feel you can give the rein again. That's it. Very good. No problem, circle, canter right. Good job, excellent correction. Now don't let her get long. I know she can stretch. I wanna know that she can be a little bit more together. 
That's it. And now think again. When I write a lengthening, yes, my horse should length. My horse should do this in a resistant way. Ask for the lengthening. That's enough. That's enough. And now collect, 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 collect. And praise her, praise her, praise her. Praise her. Excellent. Good job. Back to the trot. Almost done. Really good. Nice transition. Now don't let her run. Right your corner. Good. Diagonal. Little bit forward. Only go when you feel she you can control the lengthening. Don't just go. Yeah, good. And by the transition. Good. On the next long side, a little leg yield, shall we? From the rail to the center line. That's two downhill. Yes, that's right. A little bit more of an obvious half hold. No problem. Leg yield. Right flexion to good job. Uphill. Uphill. A little more uphill. It's a nice trot, but it's, it's too much of a downhill tendency. Yeah? Up there. Up. Up. Yes. Good. Up there. Go rising trot, and now don't let her stretch when you go posting trot. No, don't let her stretch. The horses should know when you go posting trot. You know, so many horses think, okay, that's the time, and they need to stretch. I don't want her to think that and take advantage of that. Yeah? Stay a moment off her back, but posting trot does not mean stretching. Huh? Good walk. Yeah. Uh, start again. Yes, good for you. You know, it can happen that they're a little resistant, but from now, from today on, you don't need to accept that anymore. You simply repeat the transition and you say, hey, listen. I appreciate that you take contact, but too much is too much. That's it. You decide how she needs to be connected. Yeah? And again, there's a huge difference between a horse reaching for the bridle or going against the bridle. Yes, good. That's fine. And trot again. Good job. That's fine. Yes. If we don't correct those moments of resistance, shall we? They don't, they have no reason for the, the there's no reason for them to increase the self-carriage, yeah? Then they always think it's just, that's the way it should be, that we hold them together and they're kind of too strong in the bridle, yeah? Good, they, of course they shouldn't be too light, but too much is worse. That's it. Good, and go down the long side, just like you did in Kanta, a little lengthening, okay? Very little. When she gets too strong, bring her back. A little forward. Just a little lengthening. Good. Bring her back. Ah, she got too strong. Good. Good, good. And next time, do it again on the diagonal and use a gentle tap with the whip when you bring her back. Okay? You can take it even a step further and go rising trot, posting trot, posting trot, on the diagonal, forward. Now sitting trot, little tap behind and bring her back. Tap, 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 behind, tap, tap, with the whip. Excellent, good. So, rising trot again. Uh, 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 don't get her longer, longer, we know she can do that. That's it, and on the long side again, rising trot. And when you bring her back, a little tap behind. Yeah. Short distance of lengthening. I don't. Yes, I don't want her to think that forward means grabbing the bit and running. Good job. There you got to the hind legs. And do it again. Rising trot. <clears throat> think about your shoulders. That's a better frame. Try to keep this frame when you go forward. You, you can go short distance. That's plenty. And now sitting trot. Tap, tap, tap. Good job. Good job. There you go. And see if you can give the rain after. Good, yes. You know, so basically what I'm aiming at is when, when we go into a lengthening, you really make a drastic impact with your half walk by going from rising trot to sitting trot, yeah? So, and tap behind, tap, and bring her back. That's okay, that's all right. Back to the trot. So, good, keep working on this a moment on your own, lengthening, Oh, your 10 meters is enough. 
yeah? But I don't want her to get so strong and have a downhill tendency, yeah? Uh, 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 that's too much. Could you tell? Yeah. I love it that she goes forward. Don't get me wrong. But I don't want her to to think that forward means downhill bracing against you, yeah? I need her to understand when we go forward, she can do this in self-carriage, yeah? Now go very little, gently. Good. Sitting trot, bring her back. Good job. So now she's reacting. Stay sitting trot and do it on the diagonal. There you go. That's a better frame. Good. That's it. Uphill. Keep thinking uphill. Yeah? Again. There you go. Really understand now the reason why I don't wear it too deep in the warm up, right? Because she wants to go there anyway and bring her back. Good job. That was just right. That was just the right distance. Good job. Good. And once more on the next long side. Good. We take it a step further. We go gently to a lengthening, and that e that's a great point right there. And it e is in England, uh, long side, sure, right? Not a problem. Long side, lengthening, and it S as in Sam, ask for a halt, okay? So wait with the lengthening, wait, wait, good, and out. And bleep, good. Enthusiastic about grabbing the bit and just yanking the reins out of your hand. Just keep that in mind. Yeah? But think about that, shall we, for a moment. What you did there so beautifully, you know, you rode a little forward, you brought her back, the canter was clearly becoming a little bit higher, but it was it was shorter. That's the definition of connection. Yeah? And Yes, it's not required at that level that you're at, but it's going to be so helpful for you to increase the self-carriage. Yeah? And essentially in dressage, there's nothing to me more beautiful than a horse moving expressively through the test in perfect self-carriage. Yeah? Honestly, I could mm -hmm. care less about the movements, but if that is there, the, the trot big, beautifully forward, they're nice and steady, the contact look, looks light, there's energy, true engagement. That's the bottom line, yeah? yeah. And we never want to deviate away from that, yeah? Change direction. Yeah. To the right. To the right, we come to the left. Okay. Good, then we started to the left then. And Remember, you did the right thing with the leg. You, when she was collecting, yes, you had your leg on, but it's the wrong understanding to grip with the legs and say, don't break to the trot, don't break to the trot. If she does, we'll take care of it. You pushed her quickly back into the canter. Yeah? And again, I feel like horses learn this so much quicker and easier in canter than in trot. The, the, the true idea of collection and picking up weight behind, yeah? Take your time and walk, yeah? Even there, you want to be able to bring her back a little bit, good, and ride a hard transition, hard. Don't let her grab the bit.
she's truly collected in Kendra. I said a few times, go Kendra walk. When she has so much momentum and just runs forward in Kendra, she can do a Kendra walk transition. She will always use the truck because she has so much momentum. And she's pushing with the hind leg instead of carrying. Okay? So the, that whole idea of introducing a higher degree of collection is going to be so beneficial. to the trot. If she does, you, you just know what to do and you push her quickly back. There you go. Good. Make use of it. Even shorter. And now what's, what's interesting, when she gets a bit more comfortable and kept herself, she carries her tail straighter. She, you know, she always carries mm -hmm. her tail a little bit left. Mm -hmm. yeah? she, that's it. When she gets more comfortable with the collection and self-carriage, where you can let go a little bit more, She's going to carry her tail also straighter. Good. Good. Now try the walk transition. And don't do it. Don't, don't do it when um, she's not truly collected. Yeah, if you could tell there was too much forward momentum. And now, take your time. And legs a little bit more to the girl. Yeah, right there. Right there. Collect, collect. the trunk step. Yeah. yeah. Later on you need to come down center line, you can't halt. Yeah. They they don't just learn that all of a sudden. It's introducing a higher degree of collection in canter and then raising your standards to that every every time. Yeah. And most important is that you just both of you have a more comfortable connection. Yeah. It's easy for us to hold a horse a little bit together, but you know where I'm getting at. Yeah? Good. Okay. Let me see a little truck work when you're ready. Same idea. Shall we? We don't want to just go um, forward and trot at the same tempo. Don't hesitate to bring her back a little bit. Use sometimes a little flexion. Yeah? I even like to use once in a while a little tap with the whip when, when my horse is too much against me and kind of, kind of, kind of running through my half halt. You follow me? When I want to bring my horse back, just like you did in Canter, when I want to collect a little bit, that's when I use generally the whip when I feel important that, you know, she she needs to be perfectly on the bit. She can be a little bit out there. But what I'm getting at is she has a little bit more control. Yeah. yeah? And naturally, she's she's built a little bit alongside Tatmini bit in a way where, she, where it's easier for her to reach down. Yeah? I want you to have the feeling that it's up to you to position your horse lower. It's too much up to her. Yeah? yeah? And therefore, find places early on. So very different than the previous horses that we had. They, they were so nervous we had to ride them a little bit deeper. Yeah? In her case, I don't want her to take advantage of this lower frame. That's easy for her. Yeah? And you don't get enough self-carriage if you ride her too long, too deep. Yeah? So you have their beautiful moments where you collected the canter, they learn the collection in canter a little bit easier than in trot. You had there some beautiful movements where she really picked up a little bit more weight on the hind legs. And then what does self-carriage really mean? It means that they use their own muscles, shall we, to carry themselves instead of your muscles. You're strong, I get that. Yeah? tough as an event rider, I understand that. But it, it's not up to us to hold a horse together. Yeah? Yeah. To a certain extent it is. But I want them to understand self-carriage means their, in their top line, yeah? engaging the hip, the stifle, and the hog to carry themselves more. Yeah? In, in other words, a more uphill balance. Yeah? And she's so relaxed. I would do this with her in walk when I start with her but I would not stretch her too much in trot and in canter. Yeah? We give her plenty of breaks in between, <coughs> but I need her to understand there has to be more of an uphill tendency. Yeah? 
So uh, take that idea once more into the canter and play a bit more with those transitions within the gate. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah that lead is good. So my point is with, with every horse, depending on their temperament and depending on their conformation, we have to warm them up accordingly to them. Yeah? Every horse is different. And then when you feel this work right now, when we really pick her up and we position her more uphill, when you feel that this creates too much tension later on, we can let her stretch all day long later on and walk. Yeah? Good. But do start once more from the walk. When you start, shall we look a little bit more of this way? Shoulders back. Yeah? You're sitting nicely in the center, that's good. Yeah, but sometimes your shoulders want to be a tiny bit round. Yeah, St stretch up. That's good. Now think truly uphill. If there's, uh, if there are moments where she comes a little too high up, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, they get very contrary to the previous two horses. That's good. Yes. So good. And canter when you're ready. Said so she doesn't get long at all. She got too long. Could you tell? In the transition, the judges might not criticize that too much, but she got longer in the transition. Yeah? So I want her to understand, since the transitions, uh, can't are one of the key transitions in your test, you want to make those perfect, yeah? where she doesn't change the frame. That's fine. Good. All right. And let's see if we can create, with the lengthening, <coughs> a little energy and that true collection and shorter frame bring her more uphill and collect her. Collect, right. And collect. Collect. And more. And more. That's a better frame. Like I said, it, I've never had a horse that learns the collected canter without breaking to the trot. It's very logical, but you need to teach her that there's another gear in between. Quick. Good. Awesome. Very good. You know, now she's going to get it. You were quick, a little bit firmer, it would surprise me if she does it again, yeah? So collect, there you go, there you go. She's smart. Shorten the reins a touch more, put her together, and then find that moment when she's truly collected and more with you when you give the rein. It's a little too fast. I know you guys like the speed, I get that. But we, yes. Good, and collect again, collect, collect. So, bring her back. So she needs to learn, so that's okay. Collect, find that moment where you can release the rain. Yeah, collect more, collect, collect, collect. There you go. Give the rain, give the rain, give the rain. Praise her, praise her, praise her. Oh, that wasn't enough. We are oh, the ones that were really asking her to collect. On the flip side, we really want to give the rain, okay? And then you can tell she's quite strong still on that left rein. Bend her a little bit left. Collect, 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 and more. Good job. Now give the rein a break. That's what I mean. Take a break and think about that. And walk. And when you, when I, in a hall transition, actually, whenever you're ready. Yeah? When you're ready, halt. Now make sure she doesn't step back. Try to get the left hind leg. A little tap with the whip when you get that rooting from the rain. So that's fine. Ah, 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 ah. So no, no. If she's a little too confused with the tap with the whip, we can leave that alone and halt. So and one more step forward. That's it. And try to straighten. Yeah. But honestly, this is how I start with most of my horses, not just stretching them. I go walk, halt, a little leg yield in walk, some half passes, yeah? And, and so that they know, but anytime I squeeze a little bit with my leg into the bit, they, they give in the top line, yeah? Try it once more. Halt, don't let her get too long. You know she can stretch, yeah? And halt, 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 yeah? Really know what it, what the bit needs to mean to a horse, yeah? She, she thinks, you know, the bit is there that you know, she can rest a little bit on, she can go a little bit against, yeah? Really teaching her what it means to let go, yeah? 
okay, let me watch in this frame a little bit more the trot and the canter. Right? Uh, 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 start again. Could you tell? Yeah. Little resistant there. We want to get rid of all of those moments that our horses truly understand. They go gently, respectfully to the contact, but not more than that. No, don't let her pull down. Yes, this frame. That's it. You know? And for, for a horse that's more tense or a horse that um, shows a bit more excitement in the beginning, then, you know, this might not be the right frame, but for her, that's it. Yeah? And change direction. Uh, 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 she's, she's trying to get longer. Yeah? And you, you know already the stretching is working. You, you agree with that, yeah. Shelby? Yeah? That's it. Better. This is a better frame for her to warm up in. Let her stretch and walk as much as she wants to. But I don't want a horse to take advantage of the stretch when they're naturally inclined to do so a little bit in a slight resistant way. Yeah? Good job. Good. Let me watch this a little bit in canter, okay? When you're ready. Good. So she's got a nice canter and down the long side. Good. And with her too, just a few transitions within the gait, riding a little bit forward and back. She's going forward. The question is, can she come back to you? Yeah? And you might not have a lengthening um, in your test, but you, you know already for your for your jumping course, she really needs to come back to you. you. You know, there are places where you really have to bring her back. That was almost too much, yeah? Don't go quite as long, okay? And remember, again, it's easy for her to lengthen her frame. You need to find places where she can shorten the frame. Do it on the circle, do it on the circle. Shorten, and now collect and shorten the frame, yeah? Not just the neck, shorten the whole frame. Most likely, when you do this a few times, she's gonna break to the trot, yeah? Then we push her quickly back to the canter, but see if you can collect it. Even though the collection is not even required in your test, every horse needs to learn a tiny bit collection to improve the self-carriage, yeah? And collect a little more, collect, collect, Collect. Even if she breaks once to the trot, it's not a problem. Collect, 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 collect. Bring her back. Bring her back. More collect. Yes. Collect. A little more. A little more. There you go. Collect more. 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 She can do it. More. 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 Look at that. So that's what I mean. Good. Okay. Prepare a walk transition. Prepare a walk transition when you're ready. No problem. So. Do you know where I'm getting at? The idea that the stirrup's a little bit longer. Yeah, what we want is that, just that the, the heel is nicely down without the toe pointing up. Yeah, so right now, I want to see first a little bit trot before we lengthen the stirrup, but the stirrups definitely look a little short. And I know from jumping and three-day eventing, you might be more comfortable this way. But remember in dressage, we want that nice, long leg <laughs> without a lot of bend in the you know, just a lot of weight in the ear, yeah? But um, let me watch a little bit. Seems to be pretty relaxed. That's good. <laughs> a little bit too free, yeah? And I, I like the horse to stretch, Shelby, but I, I want to make sure he he respects the bit. Do you follow me? Yeah. I don't want him to think in when we warm a horse up that they just stretch down, grab the bit, and start pulling down. Yeah? For, for that, he is just yeah, slightly a little too inconsistent. So I, I don't want this 
idea later on from the warm-up to the collected work. I don't want this to be too drastic. I, I can see he can stretch, yeah? But again, my point is I don't want him to take advantage of it, grab the bit and push too far down, yeah? So put a little bit more together than this. I know the stretch is working. Go ahead, go ahead and change direction. In other words, I can see that you can make him long, yeah? yeah? That's wonderful. I am, at the moment, just not worried or concerned that you can put them together, yeah? Her, rather, sorry. sure this is understood in the beginning. Yeah, when, when a horse really curls in and it drops the bit and it doesn't want to stretch into the bridle, I would ride her all day long like this. Yeah, but go a moment back to the walk. And let me see what happens when you know when you put a little bit more together. And of course for the training level that's not so much of a concern that our horses are truly collected. But do you, do you know where I'm getting at? I don't want her to take advantage of this idea of just being too long, too open, and then encouraging this too much in the warm-up, where later on the difference between the stretching part, the warm-up part, and the part where we put a little bit too, more together, I don't want that to be too much of a drastic transition. Yeah. Therefore, I always find with each and every horse shall be the, the most appropriate frame and tempo in the beginning, yeah? And I don't think, the way I see her right now, since it's a little bit harder for her to come together, I'm not sure if we do her a huge favor just by letting her be too long, yeah? If she's really tense, if she's nervous, go right ahead and do what you did in the warm-up, yeah? But that's working. She is relaxed, she's stretching, yeah? So now put a little bit more.